All right, it is Wrestling, Barstool Sports Professional Wrestling Podcast with me, Brandon Walker, and I get to talk uh, to everybody in the wrestling industry because I am rich and have connections, and today it's one of the up-and-coming teams in all elite wrestling. It's one of the teams that I think over the last year has really shown that Well, they're an up-and-coming team. They're on the rise, and they're fantastic. It is, of course, and every time I do this at home, my wife thinks I'm asking for something I'm not. It is the (laughs) – you all know what I'm talking about. (laughs) The acclaimed have arrived on wrestling. Guys, Max Caster, um, Anthony Bowens, thank you for being here, boys. Thank you, Brad. Uh, Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brandon. I'm going to correct you right off the bat. We are the number one tag team in the world. Um, we are no longer an up and coming team. We are in the ranks of the top teams in AEW. So I just want you to maybe redo that. You want me to actually redo the whole thing to, to all intro to reflect. Remember, everyone loves the acclaimed. You got to get it right. That's right. First of all, this is my show. I'm not going to be intimidated and do it, but, but I am going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. Here we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I get a lot of guests here because I am quite special Today, though, I happen to have the number one tag team in all of professional wrestling, not in all elite wrestling, not in North America, in the world. The number one tag team in the world has joined me today, and I promise you, they didn't make me say that. I just said it on my own. So there it is. The Actually, it's this way, right? It's not this this way. It could be any way you'd like, as long as you're scissoring. <laughs> I need to get you to talk to my wife. Anyway, uh, so it is Max Caster, Anthony Bowens. Max, Anthony, welcome again. Was the intro okay? That was great. Okay. You did such a great job on your own. That was awesome. Uh, can I just can I talk to you real quick? Because I know that you know you do the rapping intro and everything, but you're just on Zoom right now. You actually don't have to hold a mic like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, guys. So I really feel like there's a lot of momentum behind your tag team right now. Like it really feels like the last couple of months have been gigantic in your career. Uh, and I don't care who starts off by answering the question, but what do you attribute that recent momentum to? Go ahead, Max. Well, it starts with us being really great wrestlers. I can start there. Um, that's why we are the acclaimed. That's why that tag team name fit us when it was bestowed upon us when we first signed to AEW is that we are good at wrestling. We are good at other things. Um, We have a lot of interests in life that have brought us to this point. And so it's, it's the ability to adapt, the ability to be ready. I mean, we just had a tag team title match that we knew about, I don't know, maybe a couple hours in advance when a lot of people find out about matches weeks in advance, months in advance, they can kind of see it creeping up. We just had a big pay-per-view. We were left off the pay-per-view in the Dynamite right after we had the tag team title match and a huge match on Dynamite that we almost win. And, and, and every time we wrestle for the titles, we get closer to those titles. And so I think it's just a, an upward trajectory for the acclaimed. And you can see that throughout our whole entire AEW career. And you can also, I think, attribute it to because now we've been together for a little bit over a year and we finally found uh, our groove. You know, we didn't tag before AEW and a lot of times that that leads to a lot of, um, uh, I don't want to say hardships, but we were we were figuring each other out in the beginning. And now we have this chemistry down. We trust each other. We know each other. We know what we're thinking before we even uh, go out there and get in the ring together. So a lot of this right now is the chemistry really starting to come together and it's showing every week on AEW television. It's interesting, Max, that you said the rise is because you guys are great wrestlers. I, I thought it was because of your incredible charisma or just the way you pop on screen, but apparently you don't believe that. You don't think that. Okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Claim got it all. It's a total package here. That's the reason why. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, ama- it's amazing. <laughs> he's good too. Yeah, he's uh, it's cool. amazing. It's amazing how our charisma and our screen presence and our just gravitas in the arena just gets overlooked when we talk about how good the acclaimed is because it is a huge strong point for us. Obviously, when you look at other wrestlers on the show, other tag teams, especially, there's nobody more charismatic than the acclaimed. There's nobody more unique than the acclaimed. Our entrances must watch every single week, not to mention our matches. Like I, the one of the number one things I get from fans when we meet them is, you guys are the only reason we watch Dark. We're the, you're, we're the only reason that we watch uh, Elevation. 
any of the YouTube shows because people tune in to see our entrance. And there's a lot of value in that, uh, just having us on the show because look, maybe some fans are going to be on the fence. Maybe I'll watch this week. Maybe I won't, but all the time, every single week, they're going to watch the acclaim because we are so charismatic because we are so awesome on our entrance and in the ring, the way we look, the way we act, everybody loves us. And that's true. We're also very good looking. True. Easy on the eye to watch. Uh, yeah, I'd say all three of us. Yeah, thank you. Um, so <laughs> here, here's here's the thing. Your entrance is obviously, it's eye-catching. It's eye-popping. It makes you think. It, there's, there's many, many layers to your entrance. I want to go back to front, though. When you guys get in the ring and Bowens gets up on the, uh, on the rope and then you get on the, the second rope as well and you do this, right? Uh, I always get, I always get concerned. Y'all are going to get me. My sponsor's gone. Anyway, um, I always get concerned that, Max, you're going to fall because he's got the turnbuckle and you're just standing on the rope. Are you okay? <laughs> Have you seen yeah, this I'm man's great. legs? The balance and the strength that he has. You think he's going to fall over? He's got tree trunks for legs. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's a dangerous spot. I feel like you you got dibs on the turnbuckle. That's the sturdiest spot. And he's just floating <laughs> in the wind over there. It's a little tough. It's trepidatious up there. But you know what? I am a professional athlete, and I can handle standing on a steel cable mm -hmm. in sort of the middle of it while I'm scissoring my partner. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's not no big deal for me. That's just light work compared to the match we're about to have or compared to the rap. That's like the least of my concerns. Now, you guys got paired together in AEW. Were you scissoring before you got together, or, or, or how did, did that just come along when you guys got together? That came along when we got together. A lot of the stuff that we did just kind of happened by, you know, pure happenstance. Right. Caster is uh, <laughs> very unpredictable sometimes. And next thing you know, he's scissoring me. You know, he's milking my fingers. I'm like, oh, okay. And then next thing you know, uh, after like a month or so of scissoring, I'm, I'm laying on the floor and I look up and I see all these hands coming over the barricade yelling, Bo and scissor me. And I'm like, oh, we might be onto something here. So a lot of things between that, everyone loves the acclaimed and that's it. all these things started coming together um, little by little. So you guys, not just each other, you scissor all the fans too? Oh yeah. We scissored about a couple thousand fans over to Fan Fest weekend. Uh, what do we call it? Oh, Revolution weekend. Th that, that was very surprising because um when we meet fans it's hard for me to say hey would you like to scissor I, i'll never say that because it's a weird thing to ask um but fans are now coming up to us with the fingers out can we scissor how are we going to do this one guy on each side can we scissor three-way scissor four-way scissor five-way scissor i mean we're scissoring all kinds of ways brandon <laughs> got it if Tony watches this, I'm screwed. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but the entrance itself. All right. So Bowens. Yes. Max uh, comes to the ring and we'll get to the rap in a minute. He does the, does the rap and it's always on points, always good. And you know, you get into it and you always announce the acclaimed have arrived. Is that just you trying to do your little part there or what? What, what are we doing? No, no, I'm hyping up Platinum Max, the hottest rapper in professional wrestling. I didn't make sure that I'm always up and I'm ready. I'm keeping the crowd going. And also, outside of being a hype man, I'm also kind of a human meme generator. I'm trying to make all the type of crazy faces that people can screenshot and use and post everywhere all over social media. So I, I got a lot going on while he's spitting his bars. Human meme generator is an incredible nickname. Mm-hmm. That is that is fantastic. Um, has you ever have you ever been ready? Like you're coming down, and like this is a serious question, not really a joke question. But you're coming down, and you're doing the entrance. He does the rap, and then you're ready for your part. Has but has he has he ever popped you and like thrown you off your game? Yes, that happened actually a couple <laughs> a couple weeks ago at uh, one of the dark tapings. He was wrestling this dude. I, his first name is Cam, and he insinuated that his uh, mother has the same profession as his first name. Uh, which I didn't know he was going to say. And then he yelled out, I've got tokens. And I just <laughs> I almost fell off the stage laughing. <laughs> it, just out, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, so he, every once in a while, I'll tell him, hey, you know, surprise me. And we'll get a really, really genuine reaction like that. So, Max, I mean, listen, th this thing with this, you know, listen, listen, and then you, you, you throw the rap out there. Do you often have time to, to come up with it? Because you just found out you were having a tag match in two hours. Do you often have time to come up with what you're going to say, or is this like last minute? I mean, that's my job. I, I have to do it, you know, and there's, <laughs> there's nothing else. There's nothing else for me to do. So when we find out we have a match, yeah, of course I'm stretching, I'm getting dressed, I'm getting ready for the match. But the most important thing 
is that I have a little bit of time by myself and really think about how to pick apart our opponents. And, uh, you know, I've gotten Jungle Boy so much that, <laughs> you know, I had to come out with a, a new line for Jungle Boy. So I said, oh, well, you know what? This guy probably doesn't have any pubes. So <laughs> let me say that. And, and I did that and that line worked. It was pretty good. So, um, yeah, I, I I, I always do have time to come up with it. I do have a, a document of just in case if we wrestle this guy, just in case right. I got some things um, on deck ready to go. But I like being current. I like current events. Um, I like politics. Anything we can do to work that in without getting me and Anthony in trouble. I think <laughs> that's the true the true skill that I have is saying these things that are horrible but making them funny for everybody. No, I think my favorite one in recent weeks was I don't even remember what you rhymed it with, but just ending with Glenn Jacobs tweets when when that was uh, <laughs> you know when that was hot in the streets, it was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's really fucking funny." And then I'm watching last week and I'm sitting on the couch and you said, "He doesn't have any pubes." I think oh, I don't think he's right. I don't think he has pubes. <laughs> I, look at him. He's clean shorn from head to toe. He's got that curly hair, but there's nothing below the Mason Dixon line. So you you pointed it out, and now I know that if I ever scissor with Jungle Boy, it's going to be a smooth scissor. Yeah, and that's all you can hope for is a smooth <laughs> scissor. I popped him. I got him. <laughs> right, sorry. Sorry. My bad. Uh, all right. So let me ask you this, Max. Has there ever been an opponent where you where, – where, who's the hardest opponent to, to write something for? Oof. At this point, it's the Dark Order because we've wrestled them so many times. And I've gotten them in every single angle I can get them in. I, I'm like, oh, these guys are, are a dom and a sub. Yeah. This guy wears a wig. Um, you know, the, there's there's it's dark order, but there's no dark people in your group. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've exhausted the dark order so much that, you know, every time we wrestle them on an elevation match or something, me and Anthony look at each other like, uh-oh. Here we go again. You got to think of something completely new for the Dark Order. So at this point, it's them. Um, but everybody else, is, you know, is fair game. I love being able to just rip on legends. When I when I got Christian at the pay per view, that's a real popular one for me. Uh, Brian Danielson <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> said Bo I'll Bowen's arms. Bowen's arms are bigger than your legs, and the camera zooms out to show his legs. I, <laughs> Beautiful TV <laughs> moments that we make every single week doing this stuff. So, do you guys ever collaborate on what you're going to say, Bowens? Do you have any input, or do you just trust uh, your partner to come up with that? Uh, I trust him to come up with a lot of the uh, all the creative stuff. He's the writer. Um, at most, what I'll do is I'll kind of scan through uh, Twitter and find some current trending events. I'll toss him his way, like, "Hey, maybe hit on this, this, and this," and then he goes to work. That's about it. So. The entrance, everything that's awesome that has created this moment and that's helped you, it wouldn't matter at all if you guys got in the ring and, and were the shits, if you if you weren't very good. But you get in the ring and you're exciting, you're young, you're awesome, it's fantastic. You're not an you're not an old tag team. Like you're a new you're still a relatively new tag team. Like you said, uh, you didn't come up on the independence together as a tag team. You got to AEW and then they put you together. So how have you been in the ring? How have you built that chemistry so fast? Uh, in the beginning, we did a lot of training together. Before I moved to California, I trained at Creator Pro New Jersey. Max trains at Creator Pro New York, so I would drive over there. He would drive to New Jersey. We would just have these uh, brainstorming sessions to figure out, you know, what's our move set? What do we do in the ring? How do we move? Um, and we just put all that together, and then every single week we would try something new. And Dark, uh, a lot of people... The dark, dark is the acclaimed show, like Caster said, where everyone gets excited when we come out and they tune in to see us. But that's also a, a grounds for us to work on stuff. So when we do have these opportunities on Dynamite and on Rampage that we're prepared. So we have the interesting um, task of doing all this on TV every single week, as opposed to a lot of people, they, they, you know, they're in a warehouse for six months or they're training uh, off camera to try and perfect these things. We had to do it in front of people live on TV or on YouTube weekly, which made it uh, a lot more interesting. But again, it's a lot more fulfilling because yeah, we are the number one team uh, ranked team. Oh, we were the number one ranked team, but we are the number one in everyone's hearts in AEW because <laughs> everyone loves the acclaim. Yeah, everybody loves the acclaim. Yeah. Yeah. Max, same same with you as far as the early chemistry? Yeah, I think another thing that helped is us becoming friends and having actual conversations with each other, personal conversations, getting to know each other, 
each other's families, et cetera. Um, it's tough. Like we've known each other for years, but we were never really friends. Uh, definitely not close friends. And uh, so we've learned to love each other as people and as tag team partners. And uh, I think that's helped when it comes to ideas and getting things done in the ring and just just loving being in the acclaim. There was a point where I was like, man, I don't want to be in a tag team. But then like, you know, one match, two matches in, I'm like, wait, this is actually <laughs> probably the best thing that could have happened to us. So I, I think it's just being able to spend quality time with each other and, and grow on a personal level. Yeah, it's a lot of trust. Yeah, we, yeah. we trust each other to put e uh, each other in good positions and, and to support each other because my successes are his successes and vice versa. So it's it's about trust. Yeah, it is incredible when you think about it. I mean, like, his career is in your hands right now. Your career is in his hands. Like, that's uh, that's a big responsibility if you think about it like that. I don't know what Max is laughing at. Do I, do I have a booger or something? Uh, <laughs> no, no. The, see, the scary thing is Anthony's career is in my hands, but I'm such a psycho that it could blow up at any point. <laughs> and I think <laughs> – and I, I think I think Anthony knows that, and so he's always the uh, the angel on the shoulder. I'm more of the devil on the shoulder, right. and then we kind of we meet in the middle in a scissor fashion uh, <laughs> to to form one hive mind of a little bit of good and a little bit of evil. But the only problem with that is that the angel on the shoulder really only comes into play if you give it a chance. If you're sitting there on a live mic, he's not going to be able to say anything until it's too late. Well, well, there's a couple of been... times where I've had to pull the mic <laughs> <laughs> before a TNT, you know, sends ex execs to kill us. Um, so Which uh, they can do. They are corporate overlords. Forgive mm. my uh, forgive my ignorance here. Uh, who named the acclaim? Tony Khan. Okay, and, and he's some sort of uh, uh, important person at AEW. Is that correct? I think he's so. A big I, I think he might, yeah. he might yeah. be the janitor or something. Uh <laughs> I've Sorry, got, Dick. I, I, I got heat with Tony Khan right now. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm a little mad at him. So, um, what happened? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. It's just he's ridiculous. He's he, he made me mad. It's it's fine. He didn't really make me mad, but he made me mad. I'll, Do you want us to beat him up? Would you? Because he's sending people to beat us up, so we're kind of mad at him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have two questions, and these are a little. These are diverging paths. These are two individual questions. I'm going to start with Anthony Bowens. You are listed uh, from uh, Nutley, New Jersey. Yes. I uh, currently live in New Jersey. As you can tell by the accent, I'm not a native New Jerseyan. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the South. Uh, Bowens, I fucking hate it here. Um, how, help me help me understand what it's like to live in Jersey. I, you guys act like Taylor Ham's the best thing ever. It's just fucking baloney. You guys act like diners are terrific. They're just they're just waffle houses without the waffles. What what? Mm -hmm. Tell me. Tell me how to live in Jersey. Okay, so I, I'm not to disagree with you with the diner portion of that because I haven't found a great diner, Bones. I haven't found one. But here's the thing: they're clutch. You know, a lot of these states you go to, they shut down at 8 p.m. They shut down at 10 p.m. We're on the road. We're like, let's get some food. No, we can't. The only thing open right now is a McDonald's, and you know, we're, we're trying to. We're athletes. We want to eat healthy. And uh, in, in New Jersey, you can be at any point in the state and be like. Let's go get a diner. It's 3 a.m. It's 4 a.m. It's 5 a.m. You had a good night out. You can go get food. Whether it's good or bad, mm, it's a lot better than fast food. And it's clutch. Here's the thing. Um, it, you guys have been in Florida a lot. Like, you you wrestled at Daly's Place a lot. There's a Waffle yeah. House at both sides of the parking lot at Daly's Place. You go in one, out the other, you're, there's going to be a Waffle There's a Waffle House everywhere. The, the Waffle South. House by our hotel is not clutch because we tried going there a couple times, and they were not open. Oh, yeah. Multiple times, okay. the diner would be. Therefore, New Jersey wins. Fair enough. I just gotta, <laughs> I just gotta get used to Jersey because it ain't nothing but roads. You gotta pay five dollars to drive on. You shouldn't have to pay money to drive on every single road. And right. I, I, I don't know. It's a lot. Plus, we have a guy here named Frank the Tank. He's from Nutley, New Jersey, too, and he's a little bit too much. So I'm just, whatever. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Well, I just moved to L.A., so I guess I kind of feel that way a little bit. Oh, but I still love New Jersey. Excuse me, money bags. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you, Max, uh, you have this oh. carefully picked out background there, okay? Right? You mm -hmm. got some guitars. You got a, looks like a keyboard right there. And there is a Taylor Swift album on the wall. Yeah. I guess I don't really care anymore. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> do you not like taylor swift 
I went viral a couple of months ago because there's a uh, there's a couple of people here that love her that worship the ground she walks on. Every time she drops an album, everything stops. And I went viral for getting an argument saying Whitney Houston's a better singer, and they act they were about to claw my eyes out. <laughs> Obviously, she's a better singer, but the people that like t- here's the problem with fans of anything. They can't just let you be indifferent about it. If you say, Taylor Swift, she's okay, they want you to die. And Taylor, <laughs> Taylor Swift fans are the worst. They well, that, that, money for that. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me a lot of wrestling fans, actually. There's no real nuance with wrestling fans. Either you agree with them or you don't agree with them. So we have fans that, you know, obviously everybody loves us. But then, you know, some people go, wow, that thing you said was really horrible and you should die or you should be fired. And then I go, huh, well, I'm sure you'd love us one day, so that's fine. But the Taylor Swift thing, uh, that's actually uh, her best album. I would say it's my one of my favorite albums of all time, um, but I, I can't really call myself the, a huge Swifty. I don't, uh, I don't stan her. I didn't really listen to her last few albums. <laughs> I'm sure Whitney Houston is great as well. I don't really listen to her music either, but, you know, I, I have my tastes. All right. If you if you'd like, we can hang out and listen to Red together. It's a great CD. God, I would I I, I would hate that. I mean, I just <laughs> I, I, I would I wouldn't like that at all. First of all, their best CDs obviously 1989, and you're high if you think it's anything else. D- doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you <laughs> if you two guys are riding in the car. Okay, we're back on the road. COVID's kind of you know fading away. We're back on the road. You guys are going from house to, from show to show from show to show. Who's handling the aux cord? Who's who's handling the DJing? Uh-oh. Probably, probably uh, we would take turns. Honestly, I'm very I like hearing and finding new music. Yeah, as we scissor and drive together. Um, so I would probably request some sort of playlist from him, and then I would put on mine and see if he liked it. Which would probably see, be I, just to please him. I'd put on a lot of Tegan and Sarah. What's Tegan and Sarah? Oh, Tegan and Sarah, is like my favorite band. Um, they are two sisters from Canada. They write delightful uh, indie pop rock. If you want to check that out, you should go ahead and do that. Okay. All right. Delightful. Will you write that down? Yeah. I'm, I've been writing down several things you've said. Delightful indie pop rock. Anyway, yeah, we're just having fun. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. When was the first time you knew you had something? Not, not when the first time you were like, okay, this might work. When's the first time you knew, all right, we're going to be one of the most important tag teams in this world? The first time we had fans back at Daly's Place, which was the pay-per-view weekend last year in May, it was double or nothing. Yeah. And uh, we went out and we had a match for Dark. And um, wrestling in front of no fans is very weird because you don't realize how much you need the fans, how much you feed off their energy, how much their energy gives you adrenaline and you keep going and you can play to the crowd. Um, but the first time we had fans back, it was like we did one thing and it was a crazy reaction on top of the rap, on top of the entrance. Yeah. We did one thing in the ring and the reaction was so crazy. And we go, oh, all right, let's just hang out. Let's relax. Let's sit in this moment. And uh, that was when I realized that the fans had a true love for us. It wasn't just the things that we see online sure. or the things that we say online. It was that, that energy there. So every single week it's grown since then. And we had to push it a little bit farther, push it a little bit farther and we got to see where we can go. And up until now, the reactions have been great. Everybody loves us in the arenas. Everybody loves us online. Although I will say social media was a mistake and it's fake and I don't love it. That's right. But that first moment was pivotal for me because that's when I knew that we can kind of just keep doing what we're doing, keep pushing it in this direction and we don't have to change much. The thing I love about social media is how it allows uh, someone to hide their identity, have a zero follower account and just say the most vile things possible to Mm -hmm. you. That's always so pleasant. I, I really enjoy that. We really needed that in life. Somebody to be able to hide their identity and just be able to be an asshole. Yeah. They invented the block button. Uh, how many people you got blocked? I have I have uh, twenty nine hundred blocked. Ooh, I haven't counted, but I'm gonna go check that out after this. Uh, well, Twitter counts for you, and it always every time I check my number, it's like, are you are you sure this? That's a lot of people. <laughs> Whatever, a lot of assholes in this I'm world. Su- I'm surprised people don't like you, Brandon. You're a nice guy. I didn't. I 
I didn't say nobody didn't like me. Where did I say that? I have... <laughs> you... oh, oh, wait, you don't you don't like the people that you block? Is that it? I think you're calling me an asshole. I think that's what's happening right yeah. here in front of God and everybody. <laughs> Bowens, is he no, calling me an on. asshole? All right. On your own show, not even. Uh, wow, come on. You're, you're SEC football. You know all there is. That's that's abs- you. Would you Google me or something? Because there's, yeah. there's no chance you watch wrestling. I when someone good is on, yeah. <sighs> I've had I've had MJF on. He was good. That's my well, boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. I had I, yeah. had, I had Brick, ba- Brick Baker on. She was good. Uh, and then last week I had. Uh, did you guys model yourself after a tag team? Did you like look at a tag team and say, "All right, we want to be this," or are you just going, you're just free balling and figuring it out as you go? The acclaimed or the think, acclaimed. We're we're originals. Yeah. We're trying to build our pave our own path. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> the tag team division in AEW is absolutely stacked. It is full of great. You know, I, I go Young Bucks, FTR, the champs right now, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, uh, the Lucha Brothers. You now have somebody. Yeah, we got that. We now have um, the Hardy, the Hardy Boys. I mean, Jeff Hardy just made his debut. What? And when you have a division this stacked. Is that a good thing for you guys, or what? How do how do you uh, how do you how do you approach that? Or are you just worried about the acclaim business and the acclaim business only? I think competition is great, and we get to prove ourselves every week against some of the best teams in the world, and keep proving them why proving why we are the best team in the world. And plus, we get to have all these <clears throat> these matches against like for me, the Hardy Boys would be a dream match for me as a for, as a kid. Um, never would I think when I was ten years old I'd grow up and have the opportunity to beat the crap out of Matt and Jeff Hardy. So. Yeah. Uh, every week is an opportunity to prove why we are the best in the world, and and it's exciting. It's really exciting to be on the, sitting on the top of one of the best tag, the best tag team division in the world. Yeah, and the Hardys, like you mentioned, the Young Bucks, they're on my list again this year of teams I want to wrestle because the first time we wrestled them, we lost, but we had one of our best matches ever, and uh, we almost won the titles our 10th match in, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a lot that we have to prove that we want to revisit and go back to and say well you know see us in a year from now see us in two years from now how good we're going to be um and and my goal is to prove that the acclaimed is a top level team in all of wrestling that we're top level wrestlers in all of professional wrestling and we can only do that against the best team so you know bring on the hardies bring on anybody else that you want to sign because we'll beat them and we'll outshine them. And it doesn't matter how popular you think they are, the acclaimed is always going to come out on top. The acclaimed is always the team you're going to talk about once the match is over. Two last questions. I'll let you guys get out of here. Uh, you mentioned you wrestled the Young Bucks and it was one of your best matches. What do you pinpoint as your best match so far as a team? Wow. Ooh. Oh, Bowens, what do you think? <clears throat> Our best match? I'll say this. I have a Rolodex. Hold on, let me pull it up while you talk. <laughs> okay. I'll say this. Us against Sting and Darby mm-hmm. was a very, very ugly match. Uh, Sting is a big dude, and he hits hard, and that was that was tough to fight against, even though we had him two-on-one for a lot of that match. But it was our best match, in my opinion, because of the impact we had on the crowd in that week where we had the music video come out. Yeah. We had Godfrey's come out on Rampage. That was a huge, huge hit to the point where that sparked a couple signs to be in the crowd. You could see it uh, opposite the hard cam on that show. We came out, we busted a skateboard, we took Darby out, and it was one of the most memorable matches I think that those two guys have had. Uh, and it happened because of us, because of the things that we facilitated with the fan reaction to the music video to the entrance to everything that we do um so i i hold that one in my heart um as as a huge huge moment for the acclaim i would have to agree Mm -hmm. because that was main event of dynamite uh sting is a living legend uh one of the, the the very first thing i saw that got me into professional wrestling was sting so and plus it was it was a i have a personal connection to that match too because the first match I saw was Starcade 97, which is in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And that night was my nine-year anniversary as a pro wrestler. And I main evented with Sting 
in Washington, D.C. So it was a pretty cool full circle moment. And then everything that Max said, you know, we had so much we generated a buzz for a match that people um, were, I guess, excited about. And then they became extremely excited about it because, uh, you know, of Goth Phase. It was a really fun music video, which uh it was very very cold that day so i'm glad people liked it i was shirtless in 10 degree weather for hours um so i think that match holds a special place in my heart and also a special place for the acclaimed because you know we we powered through it and you know sting beat the shit out of us but we gave them both a fight and from a singles perspective it'd probably be me and uh brian danielson because i think that was a bit of a, a game changer for me in terms of uh confidence in terms of uh, aggressiveness and physicality um i think if you look at my ring presence before then and after there's a big difference so those would be the two for me all right okay uh last question and uh thank you guys for your time but last question 2022 we got, uh, you know, we're in March right now. You guys are riding a wave of momentum. What does the rest of this year and the future, what does the rest of this year and beyond look for, look like for the acclaimed? Everybody loves it. We acclaimed. want gold. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. That's really right. Excited. We want the titles. Uh, and I think we're in line to get those. I mean, there's no team that's more loved than us. There's no team that looks better than us. There's no team that gets a better reaction than us when we step into the arena. It's it's crazy how it, I'll say this. This is one of the best compliments. My favorite compliment I ever got. Mark Henry told us that the best decision Tony Khan ever made besides starting AEW mm -hmm. was putting his flame together. And that is my favorite compliment I ever got. I it gave me so much confidence when he said that because, you know, it's easy to lose sight of these things. It's easy to think, oh, you know, the acclaimed, we're still trying, we're still a young team. No, we've proven ourselves. We're a top team. We're, we're one of the top teams, if not the top team in AEW, just based on fan reaction, just based on the DIY mentality that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's not much that we can't do. So it's the titles. It's, it's becoming – more famous and, and a better presence in in the world because i think we deserve it we're talented we can do it i uh, put us out there on your red carpets put us out there on your reality shows put us out there on whatever other events you want to do because the acclaim is always going to represent in the best way possible because we can do so many things because we do cover so many demographics because we are the best wrestlers in AEW. we are the best wrestlers in the tag team division and if anybody wants to argue that, they can come see me in the ring. And that's perfectly fine. So, but that's what we're doing this year. So real talk for a second. I think it speaks a lot to both of you guys individually and as a team. The fact that that division is is filled up with teams like the Young Bucks, FTR, um, now the Hardys, Red Dragon, teams that have been together for a decade, teams that have been together forever, that have gone out in, in the world, been successful, and now they're in AEW. And yet you guys were put together in AEW, you became a team, and very, very quickly, you have put yourself into the mix as one of the greatest tag teams in the world. I think that speaks individually to Max Caster's talent, to Anthony Bowen's talent, and to probably Tony Khan's talent for being able to see it. So uh, allow me to gas you up that last second. Uh, you guys are fucking awesome, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. That's the most fulfilling thing is that we created all of this ourselves in one year. Mm -hmm. You know, all these teams have had so much time and to, to, to establish themselves and build that chemistry. And I said it in the beginning, you know, we our 10th match in. We were main eventing Dynamite with the Young Bucks. Imagine where we're going to be in a year. Now we're a year in. We're the top. We were just the top ranked team uh, in the rankings in AEW. Imagine we're going to be in two years, three years, four years, five years. So um, and we're creating all this ourselves. Nobody was feeding us anything. It was Max and I brainstorming and creating these opportunities for ourselves. And that's the most rewarding thing. So give us, you know, however many so years and it, it's going to be crazy. And we're, everyone should enjoy the ride day by day, step by step. Cause it's going to be fun. Max. That's right. And everybody loves the acclaim. Just remember that when you have a doubt in your mind, just remember that everybody loves the acclaim. You can scissor your friend. If you don't have a friend, you can scissor a stranger. Just ask for consent. That's very important. Uh, but everybody loves the acclaim. Everybody loves the acclaim. Thank you, guys. You guys are, are awesome. You guys are, are on, the, on the way. It's one of the great tag teams in the world of professional wrestling and all elite wrestling. Thank you to the acclaimed. And this has been Wrestling.